the indian ocean objectives after attending this lesson the learner should be able to comprehend about the geographic setting of the indian ocean its dimension associated water masses morphological features of the ocean floor very significant conditions of the ocean sediments marine life marine pollution and other hazards in addition the user should be able to understand the importance of the indian ocean in the context of global activities including the historical oceanographic explorations introduction oceans are the fascinating zones of the planet earth oceans provide a lot of natural resources and benefits to the life and environment the study of oceanography involves a basic understanding of all the oceans in the world the indian ocean is the third largest ocean in the world it is next to the pacific and the atlantic oceans in terms of its aerial extension this ocean is named after its close geographic proximity to india the indian ocean covers about 14% of the earth's surface it is enclosed on all the three sides by the land masses of africa asia and australia the world's earliest known civilizations including sumerian egyptian and the indian indus valley civilization all were developed around the indian ocean understanding of the geological conditions geographic setting oceanographic features and the natural resources of the indian ocean is necessary while studying earth and atmospheric sciences geography marine geology and oceanography geographic setting of the atlantic geographically the indian ocean extends from africa on the west to australia and indonesia on the east asia lies to the north and antarctica to the south the indian ocean is bounded by iran pakistan india and bangladesh to the north it is also bounded by the malay peninsula the sunda islands of indonesia and australia to the east in the southwest it joins the atlantic ocean south of the southern tip of africa and to the east and southeast its waters mingle and merge with those of the pacific the ocean is 9980 kilometers wide between the southern points of africa and australia bordering regions the sunda islands of indonesia separate the indian and the pacific oceans the atlantic and indian oceans meet off the southern tip of africa north of the equator the indian ocean is divided into two water bodies as the arabian sea on the left and the bay of bengal on the right of india and sri lanka the bay of bengal is a very unique water mass in the indian ocean the arabian sea is an attractive water mass of the indian ocean the arabian sea is the region of the indian ocean bounded on the east by india on the north by pakistan and iran on the west by the arabian peninsula in the ancient period the arabian sea was called as sindhu sagar meaning sea of sindh in sanskrit and erythrean sea aerial extent the indian ocean covers about 74.93 million square kilometers on the surface of the earth it is delineated from the atlantic ocean by the 20 degree east meridian running south from cape agulhas and from the pacific by the meridian of 146 degrees 55 minutes east in 2000 the iho redefined the indian ocean moving its southern limit to 60 degrees south with the water south of that line identified as the southern ocean the waters of the indian ocean include the red sea the oil rich persian or arabian gulf the arabian sea the andaman sea and the bay of bengal the equator passes through the northern parts a major part of this ocean lies in the southern hemisphere the indian ocean is 9980 kilometers wide between the southern points of africa and australia its north south length is 9880 kilometers 
extending from Pakistan to Antarctica. Depth and volume of water. The average depth of water column in this ocean is 3,890 meters. Its deepest point is Diamantina Deep in Diamantina Trench at 8,047 meters deep, also sometimes considered as Sunda Trench at 7,258 to 7,725 meters deep. The total volume of all oceanic waters in the globe is about 1,370 million cubic kilometers. The Indian Ocean contains about 292.131 million cubic kilometers of water. Base and Seas The Indian Ocean has several smaller water masses. It has many marginal seas, bays, gulfs and straits. To the north are the inland Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. The Arabian Sea is to the northwest and the Andaman Sea to the northeast. The large gulfs of Aden and Oman are to the northwest. The Bay of Bengal is to the northeast. The Great Australian Bight is off the southern coast of Australia. The Bay of Bengal The Bay of Bengal is the largest bay in the world. It forms the northeastern part of the Indian Ocean. It resembles like a triangle in shape and is bordered by Bangladesh and the Indian state of West Bengal down to the state of Tamil Nadu in India and Sri Lanka to the west and Burma or Myanmar and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands to the east. The Bay of Bengal occupies an area of 2.172 million square kilometers. The maximum depth of the basin is 4,000 meters south of Sri Lanka. Inflow into the Bay of Bengal a number of large rivers like the Padma, a distributary of the Ganges, Meghna, a distributary of the Brahmaputra, Jamuna, a branch of the Brahmaputra, Ayayarwadi, Godavari, Mahanadi, Krishna and Kaveri all contribute to the inflow of water into the Bay of Bengal. The shortest classified river which drains into the Bay of Bengal is the Kuvam River at 64 kilometers located in Chennai, the then Madras. Brahmaputra is the 28th longest river in the world with its length up to 2948 kilometers and it discharges into the Bay of Bengal and travels through mainly Bangladesh and China, also India. The Arabian Sea the Arabian Sea historically and geographically has been referred to by many different names by Arab travelers and European geographers. The other names are Sindhu Sagar, Eritrean Sea, Sindh Sea and Akhzar Sea. The Arabian Sea's surface area is about 3,862 million square kilometers. The maximum width of the Arabian Sea is approximately 2,400 kilometers and its maximum depth is 4,652 meters. The largest river flowing into the Arabian Sea is the Indus River and the others include the Netravati, Sharavati, Narmada, Tapati, Mahi and the rivers of Kerala. Features of the Arabian Sea The Arabian Sea coast of central India is known as the Konkan coast and that of southern India is known as the Malabar coast. The countries with coastlines on the Arabian Sea are Somalia, Djibouti, Yemen, Oman, Iran, Pakistan, India and the Maldives. The Arabian Sea is an important route of water transportation within India and serves as the base of the fishing industry on the west coast. The Arabian Sea has long been an important trade route between India and the West. Its chief ports are Aden, Yemen, Karachi, Pakistan and Mumbai, India. The Notable Gulfs The Arabian Sea has two important branches as the Gulf of Aden and the Gulf of Oman. The Gulf of Aden which is located in the southwest connects the Red Sea through the Strait of Bab el Mandeb to the Indian Ocean. Similarly, the Gulf of Oman, which is located to the northwest, 
connects the Indian Ocean with the Persian Gulf. There are two more important gulfs in the Arabian Sea. They are the gulfs of Cambay and Kutch on its coasts. The Andaman Sea The Andaman Sea refers to the body of water in the northeastern corner of the Indian Ocean. It stretches about 650 kilometers from west to east and 1,200 kilometers from north to south. It is connected with the Australasian Mediterranean Sea via the Malacca Strait between Thailand and Sumatra. The Great Andaman is the main archipelago or island group of islands in the Bay of Bengal, and Ritchie's archipelago consists of smaller islands. The temperature of the surface waters fluctuates mildly from a monthly average of about 30 degrees centigrade in the summer months to one of about 27.5 degrees centigrade in the winter months. The surface salinities exhibit strong seasonal variations due to an extremely large freshwater influx from the Irrawaddy and Salween rivers during monsoon season. In the northern part, the salinities range from about 20 during the monsoon months from June to November to about 32 from December to May. Indian Ocean Explorations The report prepared by James F. Pepper and Gail M. Everhart of the U.S. Geological Survey in the year 1963 bears a good amount of information about the geological conditions of the Indian Ocean. Mary Sigrist and Parker D. Trask the two notable German scientists have reported about the deep sea sediments of the Indian Ocean way back in 1938. It has shown the earlier expeditions carried out in 1901 to 1903. Sir John Murray studied about the depth and marine deposits of the Indian Ocean in the year 1905 and 1909. It is here in his report, it was mentioned that the voyage of the Nearchus one of Alexander's generals from the Indus to the Persian Gulf is the first noteworthy voyage in these seas. It was also found that ships were used in 610 BC by the Egyptian monarchs. The Notable Expeditions of Indian Ocean Magellan was the first navigator who attempted to take a deep sounding in the open ocean in 1952. Surveys were made by HMS Cyclops very earlier to this in the year 1857. The HMS Challenger, during the voyage around 1872 to 1876, crossed the Indian Ocean and studied the bathymetry. The other vessels are German ship Gesell, year 1874 to 1875, USSR ship Enterprise, year 1883 HMS Flying Fish year 1886 HMS Egeria 1887 and HMS Stroke in 1888 HMS Marathon 1893 HMS Stork in 1892 German Deep Sea Expedition Waldivia 1898 to 1899 HMS Sylvia, 1873. All these workers have contributed at the early stage of Indian Ocean exploration. Discovery of trade routes. For several centuries, the Indian Ocean has been an important trade route. For several hundred years, the Arab, Chinese and the Indian traders have all navigated through the Indian Ocean. The Greek historian Herodotus, wrote about the expeditions to the ocean around 600 BC. In the year 1498, the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama sailed across the Indian Ocean after rounding the southern tip of Africa. After the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, the Indian Ocean became one of the most direct shipping routes between the Europe and the Far East. The Suez Canal connects the Red Sea, an arm of the Indian Ocean, with the Mediterranean Sea. The canal provides a direct shipping link between the ports of the Indian Ocean and those of Southern Europe and the ports of North Africa. Modern Oceanographic Exploration The period from 1900 to early 21st century 
is considered as the age of modern oceanographic exploration. In the year 1917, Mason of U.S. invented the Echo Sounder, which was used as a submarine detector. From 1950, as a result of university contributions to the World War effort, government support for academic fraternity, the ocean research and education was greatly increased. This permitted universities to play a major role in ocean studies for the first time. The deep ocean floor exploration and the theory of plate tectonics came during the 1960s. Advanced Navigational Systems Loran Navigational System, based on radio signals, was developed to estimate accurate locations. Current meters were used to measure current velocities and directions. Floats were used to track water movements. Later, the mapping of the slopes of the ocean surface, movement of surface currents, sea surface temperatures, the dynamics of the rapidly changing ocean features that could not be adequately studied from ships were successfully done using the Earth orbiting satellites. Today, satellites help in oceanographic exploration in all oceans. Crustal plates and the Atlantic. According to the theory of plate tectonics, the Earth's surface comprises a series of thin plates floating on a semi-liquid mantle. The plates are of two types as oceanic plates and continental plates. Although continental plates are located under the continents, they usually extend into the ocean as well. Oceanic plates are located under the oceans. Every plate has an extensive plate boundary. At plate boundaries, separation allows new crustal material to emerge as in the mid-Atlantic ridges. Where plates move together, typically the edge of one plate will slide under another, forming subduction zones. According to the theory of plate tectonics, scientists believe that the Indian Ocean started to form about 200 million years ago. India broke away from Antarctica and Australia as early as 130 million years ago and moved northward about 45 million years ago. India's northward movement produced numerous scars and ridges on the ocean floor. New crustal rock is being formed along the Mid-India Ridge. Profile of the Ocean Floor The International Indian Ocean Expedition conducted during the period from 1962 to 1965 with the participation of 25 nations gave a lot of data about the profile of the Indian Ocean. There are three major morphological zones in the Indian Ocean as continental shelf, continental slope and deep ocean basin. Beyond the continental shelf, the ocean floor becomes rugged, consisting of mountain ranges, broad plateaus and deep basins or trenches. Continental Shelf The continental shelf is the submerged land at the edge of the continents. It begins at the shoreline and gently slopes underwater to an average depth of about 120 to 230 meters. The width of the continental shelf averages 480 kilometers. These are second-order physiographic features. The continental shelf of the Indian Ocean stretches for up to 200 kilometers in some parts of it. Around Africa, Asia and Australia, it slopes gently to an average depth of 140 meters. Around Antarctica, it reaches a depth of 300 to 500 meters. Between Australia and New Guinea Island, the shelf is 960 kilometers wide. The continental shelves are characterized by a large number of canyons and valleys. The shelf is relatively broader in the vicinity of Madagascar. There is a vast thickness of consolidated sedimentary rocks overlying crystalline rocks. The edge of the shelf is called as the shelf break. It is followed by the continental slopes. Continental slope 
beyond the continental shelf, the ocean floor becomes rugged, consisting of mountain ranges, broad plateaus, and deep basins or trenches. The depth range of the continental slope of the Indian Ocean is around 250 meters to 2,000 meters. The slope is much steeper than the shelf. It plunges to a maximum depth of about 7 kilometers. The greatest depth is 7,100 meters. Submarine Canyons as the name implies, submarine canyons are deep, narrow valleys of the continents, extending inside the oceans. In general, a submarine canyon is a steep-sided valley under the sea of the continental margins. Indian Ocean has a few notable submarine canyons. They include the Perth Canyon and the Swatch of No Ground, in short called as Song or S O N G. The Perth Canyon. The Perth Canyon is a submarine canyon located on the edge of the continental shelf off the coast of Fremantle, Western Australia. It is located at approximately 22 kilometers west of Rottnest Island. It was carved by the Swan River, probably before the tertiary, when this part of the continental shelf was above sea level. It is an average of 1.5 kilometers deep and 15 kilometers across, making it similar in dimension to the Grand Canyon. It occupies an area of 2,900 square kilometers and ranges in depth from 700 to 4,000 meters. Within a few kilometers, its depth drops from 200 meters down to 1,000 meters. And then it continues as a deep gully all the way out to the 4,000 meter depth. It contains the world's largest plunge pool, a depression in the canyon which is 2 kilometers long, 6 kilometers across and 300 meters deep. The Song or S-O-N-G Canyon The Swatch of No Ground, Song, is a submarine canyon in the northern Indian Ocean. It supports a fairly well-described group of fauna that includes one of the world's largest known populations of Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, a possibly resident population of bright's whales, and large groups of spinner and pantropical spotted dolphins. The distribution of these species is stratified according to environmental characteristics with bright's whales and bottlenose dolphins concentrated in relatively shallow waters close to the canyon head where upwelling is maximized. Deep Ocean Floor The deep ocean floor begins at the seaward edge of the continental slope and abyssal zone. The depth ranges from 2,000 to 6,000 meters. The thickness of sediments in the oceans averages about 3,000 to 4,000 meters. The deep sea sediments can reveal much about the Earth's history of the last 200 million years. They show the evidences for various processes, including plate movements, eruption of mud volcanoes, the history of ocean life, the behavior of Earth's magnetic field, the changes in the oceanic currents and paleoclimate. The ocean basins are transient features over geologic time, changing shape and depth while the process of plate tectonics occurs. Abyssal Plains and Hills The abyssal zone refers to ocean floor depths from 3000 to 6000 meters. Bathyal zone refers to ocean floor depths from 200 to 3000 meters. Abyssal plains are those parts of the ocean that begin at the edge of the continental margin and continue into the ocean depths. These plains cover approximately one half of the deep ocean floor. The flatness of these plains is the result of the accumulation of a blanket of sediments from 3 to 5 kilometers thick which overlies the basaltic rocks of the oceanic crust. Abyssal hills are irregular structures on the ocean floor that average about 250 meters in height. 
Features of Abyssal Plains Abyssal Plains, found in the Atlantic and Indian Ocean, tend to be more extensive than those in the Pacific Ocean. Abyssal Plains are relatively flat areas of the ocean basin with slopes of less than one part in a thousand. They tend to be found at depths of 4,000 to 6,000 meters below sea level. Oceanographers believe that the abyssal plains are so flat because they are covered with sediments that have been washed off the surface of the continents for thousands of years. On the abyssal plains, these layers of sediment have now covered up any irregularities that may exist in rock of the ocean floor beneath them. The notable abyssal plains of the Indian Ocean are Great Bright Abyssal Plain, 5,560 meters depth, Argo Abyssal Plain, 5,600 meters, and Somali Abyssal Plain, 5,190 meters. Ocean Basins The deep sea basins occupy huge spaces in the world's oceans. About 50% of the bottom of the Indian Ocean is in the form of broad, flat, deep sea plains. Their depth ranges from 4,000 to 6,000 meters. Scientists from many countries are collaborating on the ocean drilling program. The aim of this program, begun in 1987, is to improve knowledge of the Indian Ocean floor. The notable basins of Indian Ocean are the Crozet Basin with a depth of 4,600 meters, Wharton Basin with a depth of 5,980 meters, South Indian Basin with a depth of 4,722 meters, and Central Indian Basin with a depth of 4,540 meters. Mid-Ocean Ridges As the name implies, this ridge rises in the middle of the ocean. These are mountain-like structures. They run through the center of the Indian Ocean basins. The ridge begins in the Gulf of Aden and separates into two parts at about 25 degrees south latitude. Two ridge systems run through the Indian Ocean in a roughly meridional direction, dividing it into three parts of equal size. They are the Central Indian Ridge, the 90 East Ridge and the Southeastern Indian Ridge. Notable Ridges The notable ridges of the Indian Ocean are the 90 East Ridge, the Investigator Ridge, the Mentawai Ridge, the Chain Ridge, the Amirante Ridge, the Davy Ridge, the Murray Ridge, the Broken Ridge, the Hartog Ridge, the East India Mound Ridge, the Bengal Ridge, the Carlsberg Ridge, the Digo Garcia Ridge, the Mascarene Ridge, and the Crozet Ridge. Deep Ocean Trenches An ocean trench is a long, deep depression in the ocean floor. The oceanic trenches are one of the most striking features of the ocean floors. The deepest trench is the Java Trench, which is at least 7,100 meters below sea level. The other trenches of the Indian Ocean are the Sunda Trench, the Nicobar Trench, the Amirante Trench, the Timer Trough, the New Guinea Trench, Chagos Trench and the Ob Trench. The Diamantine Deep is one of the deepest points in the Indian Ocean located in the Ob Trench. Sea Mounts A sea mount is an underwater mountain rising from the ocean sea floor. They are formed by hotspot volcanism. These are also formed from extinct volcanoes that rise abruptly and found rising from the sea floor. They normally rise up to an elevation of 1000 to 4000 meters. The flat topped sea mounts are called as Gaiots. Many sea mounts do not rise to a peak but have a flat top. The smaller submarine volcanoes are called sea knolls. Sea mounts are notable features of ocean bottoms. The sea mounts of the Indian Ocean are the Nikitin Sea Mount, 
the Banzare Sea Mount, the Africana Sea Mount, the Girand Sea Mount, the Protea Sea Mount, the Coco de Mare Sea Mount, the Golden Rock Sea Mount, the Batavia Sea Mount, and the Lena Gayot. The plateaus. An oceanic plateau is a large, relatively flat submarine region. It rises above the level of ambient seabed. Indian Ocean has a lot of such plateaus. The notable plateaus are Exmouth Plateau, Kerguelen Plateau, Mascarene Plateau, Naturalistic Plateau and Madagascar Plateau. Islands When compared to the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans, the Indian Ocean has less number of islands. The Madagascar and the Sri Lanka are the biggest and the most prominent islands of Indian Ocean. Only 37 of the 572 islands and islets of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are inhabited, or 6.5%. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands have unique features like colorful coral reefs, marine life, habitations, mud volcanoes and tribal population. The smaller islands are the Socotra, the Zanzibar, the Comoro, the Seychelles, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Lakshadweep Islands, the Maldivian Islands, the Mauritius Islands, the Reunion Islands, the Cocos and the Christmas Islands. Water Masses and Temperature The Indian Ocean has a water temperature that ranges from below minus 12 degrees centigrade to 35.6 degrees centigrade around the equator. It varies with different regions. The temperatures of the Indian Ocean waters depend on the latitude, season and current systems in the region. The temperatures observed at different regions are Surface temperature 26.7 degrees centigrade Arabian Sea Coast 28.2 degrees centigrade Red Sea and the Persian Gulf 23.9 degrees centigrade Deep Zones 13 to 15 degrees centigrade Indian Ocean Bottom 7.5 degrees centigrade Salinity The surface waters of the Indian Ocean have a higher salinity than those of any other ocean reaching values exceeding 37 parts per thousand. Four major factors influence salinity or salt concentration of waters in the Indian Ocean. They are the inflow of waters from the rivers, monsoonal precipitation, evaporation and seasonal winds. Near the equator, precipitation dominates and surface salinities of about 35 parts per thousand are observed. Higher salinities, that is, more than 36 parts per thousand, are noticed south of the equator, west of Australia. The salinities of the Persian Gulf water is around 36.38 parts per thousand. The North Indian Ocean and the Bay of Bengal waters have a salinity range around 34 parts per thousand. Thermohaline Circulation the thermohaline circulation consists of deep water formation, spreading of deep waters, upwelling of deep waters and near surface currents. In contrast to the wind driven currents, these are not confined to surface waters but can be regarded as a big overturning of the world ocean from top to bottom. Climate of the Indian Ocean Indian Ocean experiences a typical climate due to its geographic location, surrounded by various continents on all sides. The climate of the Indian Ocean includes northeast monsoon, December to April, and southwest monsoon, June to October. The central and northern regions of Indian Ocean have a tropical climate. These regions experience regular tropical cyclones during May, June, and October, November in the northern Indian Ocean and January-February in the Southern Indian Ocean. The seasons and the distance from the equator decide the temperature at the surface of the sea. But the temperature does not reach extremes in any way as seen in other major oceans. In January, 
The surface temperature in northern hemisphere ranges from 21 degrees to 27 degrees centigrade and in southern hemisphere from 27 degrees to 29 degrees centigrade. The southwest monsoon determines the climate of the northern Indian Ocean. Effects on climate When the monsoon winds change, cyclones sometimes strike the shores of the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. The Indian Ocean is the warmest ocean in the world. The Indian Ocean has three belts of wind monsoons, southeast trade winds and prevailing westerly winds. The northeast or dry monsoon blows from Asia across India to East Africa from November to March. The southeast or west monsoon blows from the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal across India and Southeast Asia, picking up moisture from the ocean. The southwest monsoon blows from April to October. The southeast trade winds originate in the southern hemisphere and blow towards the equator. In the Arabian Sea, the violent monsoon brings rain to the Indian subcontinent. Ocean Currents Ocean currents result from two processes. One is the action of wind on the surface of the water and the other one is from the variation in water temperature that causes movement. This process is known as convection. Winds have the most important influence on the flow of currents, butt tides, precipitation, evaporation rates, shape of the ocean floor and inflow from rivers and adjacent seas are also important. In the Indian Ocean, the surface circulation and depth integrated flow are dominant. Notable currents, currents and tides are typical in this ocean. The Indian Ocean has asymmetric ocean circulation. The winds govern the movements of currents in the Indian Ocean. The currents vary with the season. Depending on monsoon, the currents may flow north to the equator, either eastward or westward. In the southern hemisphere, the south equatorial current, a warm water current, flows westward along the equator driven by the trade winds towards Africa and south along the African coast. Then it turns east and follows the westerly winds to Australia. The west wind drift, a cold water current driven by Antarctica winds, flows northward to Australia where it turns to east. Tides. The tides of the Indian Ocean vary greatly. The ocean's smaller area and the fact that it is enclosed on four sides by continents probably account for its moderate tidal variations. The highest and lowest tides occur along the western coast of Australia. The tide rises up to 11 meters at the Collier Bay near Derby, but as little as 3 centimeters near Geraldton and near Bunbury, Australia. Marine life in the Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean is the abode of a wide variety of marine animal species. Phytoplankton is the key microscopic organism for direct or indirect survival of these species. Phytoplankton are abundant near northern India and Persian Gulf. Most rare species like dugong, a plant-eating marine mammal, is also found in this ocean. Indian Ocean is also home to dolphin and many varieties of fishes. The fishes of the Indian Ocean are of great importance to the bordering countries for domestic consumption and export. The Indian Ocean provides about 7% of the world's fish catch. That amounts to 7 million metric tons. The most fishing activity takes place near west coast of India. Fishing fleets from Russia, Japan, North Korea and Taiwan also exploit the Indian Ocean mainly for shrimp and tuna. Endangered marine species include the dugong, seals, turtles and whales. Marine life in the Bay of Bengal. The Bay of Bengal is one of the world's 64 largest marine ecosystems. It is full of biological diversity. The coral reefs, estuaries, fish spawning and nursery areas and the mangroves are favorable zones for fisheries. 
Kerilia Jerdonai is a sea snake of Bay of Bengal. Glory of Bengal cone, Conus bengalensis, is just one of the three shells which can be photographed along the beaches of the Bay of Bengal. An endangered species, the olive ridley typical sea turtle, can survive because of the nesting grounds made available at the Gahirmatha Marine Wildlife Sanctuary, Gahirmatha Beach, Orissa, in India. Marlin, Baracuda, Skipjack tuna, Catruvonus pelamis, Yellowfin tuna, Indo Pacific humpbacked dolphin, Souza kinensis, and Bright's whale, Balinoptera idinae, are a few of the marine animals living in this ocean. The Bay of Bengal hogfish, Bodianus nailai, is a type of wrasse which live in turbid lagoon reefs or shallow coastal reefs. Sculpts of dolphins can be seen, including bottlenose dolphin, Tarsiops truncatus, pantropical spotted dolphin, Stenella attenuata, or the spinner dolphin, Stenella longirostris. Tuna and dolphins are usually residing in the same waters. In shallower and warmer coastal waters like Irrawaddy, dolphins, Oracella brevirostris, can be found. The Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve provides sanctuary to many animals, some of which include the saltwater crocodile, Crocodilus porosus, giant leatherback sea turtle, Dermochelis coriacea, and Malayan box turtle, Cuora amboinensis camaroma, to name a few. Marine life in Maldives Marine life in Maldives are yet another feature of the Indian Ocean. The waters in and around Maldives is best described as a treasure trove of marine life. The abundance of marine life in the Maldives can be mainly attributed to the ideal growing conditions for the coral reefs. Thousands of fishes and other marine life flourish in and around the underwater gardens of corals. In Maldives, the coral reefs of about 70 different species and in almost every color adorn the waters surrounding these islands. The clear waters and abundance of various species of fishes and beautiful aquatic plants has made Maldives popular as a diving destination with divers from all around the world. More than 700 species of fishes have found their home among the reefs in Maldives. Marine sediments. Indian Ocean contains a lot of marine sediments enriched with metallic minerals. These sterigenous sediments occur mostly on the continental shelves, slopes and rises. These sediments merge into the abyssal plains. Underwater cones of thicknesses of at least one mile are found in the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea, and the Somali and Mozambique basins. The Bengal fan is a popular one. Wharton Basin of Northern Australia has the oldest sediments. North of 50 degrees south latitude, 86% of the main basin is covered by pelagic sediments, of which more than half is Globigerina ooze. The remaining 14% is layered with terrigena sediments. Mineral resources. Huge oil reserves occur under the Persian Gulf. The economic minerals found beneath the coastal waters in many areas of the Indian Ocean include the ores of tin, titanium and phosphorite. Large reserves of hydrocarbons are being tapped in the offshore areas of Saudi Arabia, Iran, India and Western Australia. An estimated 40% of the world's offshore oil production comes from the Indian Ocean. Beach sands rich in heavy minerals and offshore placer deposits are actively exploited by bordering countries, particularly India, South Africa, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Thailand. Sea routes, ports and harbors. The Indian Ocean provides major sea routes connecting the Middle East, Africa and East Asia with Europe and the Americas. It carries a particularly heavy traffic of petroleum and petroleum products 
from the oil fields of the Persian Gulf and Indonesia. Among the important ports located in the Bay of Bengal are Kadalur, Ennore, Chennai, Karaikal, Pondicherry, Tutikorin, Kakinada, Machili Patnam, Vishakha Patnam, Paradeep, Kolkata, Mongla, Chittagong and Yangon. The major international seaport located in Bangladesh is the port of Chittagong and Yangon is an important port in the bay belonging to Myanmar. Major Indian ports on the bay include Kakinada, Chennai, Pondicherry and Vishakhapatnam. Notable environmental issues Due to the relatively high traffic of petroleum tankers, piracy off the Somali coast has been rising. This has been a threat to international shipping since the second phase of the Somali civil war in the early 21st century. Pollution is increasing in the Indian Ocean because of metal and chemical production and the outpouring of sewage, petroleum and food processing waste. In addition, the Persian Gulf suffered severe oil pollution resulting from the Persian Gulf War of 1991. Iraq dumped an estimated 1.75 billion litres of Kuwaiti crude oil into the Gulf. The notable environmental issues of the Indian Ocean region are coastal erosion, loss of biodiversity, marine pollution, harmful algal blooms with fish kills, over-exploitation of inshore fish and invertebrate stocks, sand and coastal dune mining, inappropriate coastal development, fisheries, degradation of marine ecosystems, frequent cyclones, increased nutrient concentrations, habitat alteration and loss of marine pests. Conclusion Historically, the Indian Ocean region has played a prominent role for commerce and trade linking the East and the West for centuries. For the colonial powers, particularly for Britain and France, in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries and until the construction of the Suez Canal in 1869, the islands of the Indian Ocean have all provided the trading posts and refueling locations en route to their colonies in the East. The culture of the Indian Ocean islands reflects the ethnic diversity, history, politics, music, dance, food, drink, arts, sports and international influences in that region. Besides the large-scale processes, the coastal zone is subject to the impact of tides, local winds, river runoff, etc. All are differing from place to place.